Let's walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. Begin by reviewing the overall structure. We have several VIs and we've got multiple process loops operating in parallel in separate VIs. We have inter process communication with global variables. And that happens in a number of places. So here you have the main VI, and the main VI calls sub VI number one and sub VI number two. Also, we have the global variables VI. This is a special one. It has no block diagram. It only has a front panel. All right, let's look at RT, RT main in some detail. First, we initialize the all stop global variable and then run sub VI number one and sub VI number two. This idle process loop pulls the stop button and then sets the all stop global variable and also stops the loop when that stop button is pressed. Okay, and there's the all stop global variable. Sub VI number one implements the fast counter. Fast counter is written to the appropriate global variable on each iteration it increments unless the reset global variable is true, in which case it resets to zero. So here we have the reset global variable. Sub VI number two is also a counter. In this case, the counter typically follows the path of maintaining the same value unless the fast counter has reached 10. In that case, it increments the count value and sets the reset global variable. Now let's take a moment to learn how to create a global variable from scratch. Go to programming and find global variable. Then I'm going to double click on that and we have an empty front panel. I'll place a couple controls, a numeric, and then a Boolean. And the idea is you can place as many or as few of these controls and indicators as you need. It comes up with a default name for the global variable. You might want to choose a, a more meaningful name for your own project. And that's now been created in the project hierarchy. Once it's been created, then you select the appropriate control that you had placed earlier. By default, it's in write mode. You can right click on this and choose change to read. And that's how you read the global variable instead of writing to it. You can edit an existing global variable. One way to do that would be to open the global variable VI and make the appropriate changes. Finally, let's learn how to stop both loops from a single stop button. The stop button is read in RT main, and then it's broadcast to this global variable that appears in the two sub VIs. So that global variable is called all stop. I'm going to wrap up here by showing you why it's important that RT main initializes the global variable for all stop. You'll notice that the final state of all stop is set. If we did nothing special, then the other VIs would not be able to start up. So that's why the very first thing you have to do is set the global variables to proper values before running the VIs.